Kyle Rittenhouse, the big bad wolf? Or is he just a young kid that put himself in a bad situation that spiraled out of control? Well, let's see if we can get to the bottom of it. Let's look at this with some common sense, some logic, some facts, some truth. We're not going to get all up in our feelings. Let's see if we can figure out who this kid was and, you know, who these other people were that happened to be involved that night. Let's see if we can come up with something here because I've made a couple of videos of Kyle in the past that have got a lot of comments where people just demonize this kid. They think he needs to spend his life in prison. They think he's a racist white supremacist that was there, put up with his gun to shoot people. And that's just not the truth. It's not. But I understand where you're coming from. Mainstream media, social media, the, these people are just putting this narrative out there that that's what this kid is. And nobody's really looking into it. Um, you watch some great YouTube channels. Colin Noir, he's a black guy. He's a super smart lawyer, um, staunch Second Amendment supporter, very knowledgeable on the Second Amendment, knowledgeable on law. He's a lawyer, and he goes over this case and says it's a clear-cut case of self-defense for Kyle. He said at no point in, at, at all that night did he give up his right to defend his life if he felt it was in jeopardy. So go check him out. I highly suggest that. I've watched some other lawyers that aren't on the left or the right. They're just lawyers given a breakdown of what happened. And they all come to the same conclusion that whether Kyle was 17 and had that gun there, it, that wasn't that didn't give these people the right to attack him. It didn't, he didn't give up his right to defend his life. Think about this. He's 17 years old. People say, oh, he's 17. He shouldn't have. Okay. 18 years old, members of this country, American citizens can sign up for the military, go over to Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever, and fight wars and die for this country at 18. Just think about that, okay? He, he wasn't 18, I get it. But in less, I'm guessing less than a year, he could have signed up for the military, gone over to Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and died for his country. Another thing to think about. All these people that are at these riots, all these people on the far left, all these Democrats uh, leaders that are screaming, defund the police. Do you guys not understand? This is what you're going to get when you defund the police. You're going to get people that have to stand up and protect their businesses. Because when the police are gone, when you defund the police and there's no police, criminals aren't going to stop. So people like Kyle. Are going to have to stand up to defend their own houses, their own residents, their own businesses, their friends' businesses, themselves. And this is what it's going to look like, guys. Like, you don't understand. These people that are calling to defund the police should look at this case. This is what defunding the police will look like because the police could not do their job in Kenosha, Wisconsin. For two or three nights straight, the city burned. It was just nothing but savage rioting, violence. The police could not do their job. Someone had to. These people's lives were being burned down right in front of them. It was truly disgusting. And then you add in the lies from the mainstream media, social media, and you get the villain right here in front of you, a 17-year-old kid. Before I go any further, guys, just getting started out here on YouTube. As you can tell, super grateful for each and every one of my subscribers right now. We get a lot to talk about. The world has gone crazy. So I'm going to bring it to you guys with common sense, logic, facts, truth. We're not going to get all into our feelings here. So if you like what I have to say, my goal is 100 subscribers by Christmas. Hit the subscribe button. Join me on this journey. I would love to have you. Let's see. Who is Kyle Rittenhouse? Well, it looked like he was a mama's boy. Kind of a quirky little kid. Looks, looks a little dorky there, but, you know, whatever. That's nice. A little mama's boy. That's great. Um... I'd say this was probably back in his younger days, but he wanted to be a police officer, I guess, in his social media bio or whatever. It's, uh, he wanted to be a, a police officer. He was in some kind of, I don't know if it was like ROTC for a police or something like that, some junior police officer program, but that's great. Like, he wanted to protect and serve. 
You know, he wanted to help out. He wanted to be a cop. And of course, you get everybody on the left that are demonizing police now. All police are bad and defund the police. So they look at this and they say, oh, yeah, he's a bad guy. He's just like the rest of them, ACAB or whatever they say. Anybody that wants to be a police officer, firefighter, EMT, any of that, I respect them for that. You know, giving back, helping out, I respect them. Now, Kyle didn't have any criminal record at all, never been involved in any kind of issues with the cops, no criminal record. So what happened that day? I mean, he just seemed like a decent kid. I mean, wanted to be a police officer, got good grades in school. He was a lifeguard. Lifeguard's job is to help other people out, save lives if need be. Uh, so he was a lifeguard in Kenosha. After that day, when the night that things happened, that day he worked as a lifeguard, got off his job as a lifeguard, helping people out, went to one of the local high schools there and was cleaning graffiti off one of the schools that these BLM Antifa rioters spray painted everywhere. So you got a kid, 17-year-old kid, could have gone home after work and played video games, but went out with a bunch of his friends and tried to clean up this graffiti. That's a charitable thing to do. That's a nice thing to do. You know, putting in your own elbow grease to clean this graffiti off this school. You know, it, that to me, that's another good deed. It's another good deed. So when night, fought, when night fell and everything started to brew up again in Kenosha, him and some of his buddies, they went there to protect businesses. Listen, there was a guy that owned three local businesses in Kenosha. Had two of his businesses burned down the previous night. Now, I'm not sure if you guys seen pictures of Kenosha that night. Kenosha was nothing short of a war zone. Nothing short of a war zone. The whole town, the whole city was up in flames. And you see, you look at this community center. It's got a Black Lives Matter sign. And they still destroyed it. These people do not care. If you bend the knee, they will still come for you. This is in a restaurant. I mean, I could show you 100 pictures right now of fires in the aftermath. The aftermath looks like Syria after being bombed for 10 days straight. You know, some foreign third world country that's been bombed to oblivion. That's what the aftermath looked like. It is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. So him and his buddies went there to protect the business. People are getting injured, and our job is to protect this business, and part of my job is to also help people. If there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. That's why I have my rifle, because I don't protect myself, obviously. But I also have my med kit. You heard him right there. He's there to protect the business. That was his job. He was there to protect the business, but he was also there to help protesters. He said he's running into harm's way if someone gets hurt with his med kit, but he had also had to protect himself. That's why he had his rifle. I, I mean, he won't listen. He wasn't there to start problems with anybody. All right. That's my opinion. I don't know. Some people, it's hard to convince these people otherwise, but he just told you what he was there for. Um, so what happened was these guys, all these rioters, these, uh, BLM and Antifa rioters, they lit a dumpster on fire. They were pushing the dumpster towards the gas station. Kyle or somebody else had a fire extinguisher. There's a videotape of Kyle running by the video camera, the phone whoever was filming it, he had a fire extinguisher in his hand. That's why people think it was Kyle that might have put out the dumpster fire. And these kids, these Antifa BLM people became enraged. They turned into like a swarm of just angry hornets. They became so enraged. Now, what I'm going to show you next is when these people were enraged. And this is the most bizarre thing to me. I'm kind of going to jump around here. But it shows one of the guys that ended up getting shot and killed the first kid, Joseph Rosenbaum. It shows him yelling at Kyle and this group of guys, saying, I'll ride up on that. Shoot me, and we're shoot me, shoot me, and we're first of all, Joseph. Careful what you ask for, the universe delivers. <sighs> Secondly, why is this kid saying the N word? Like he's saying a racial slur over and over again. And nobody, like, nobody's got beef with that. Everyone's kind of calling Kyle the racist and white supremacist, but nobody cares that this kid is saying the N-word over and over again. 
And if they say, well, no, he got shot and killed. So, well, listen, he was attacking. This is the irony in all this. Kyle's a teenager, right? This kid, Joseph Rosenbaum, was attacking Kyle. He was literally chasing after him and trying to pull his gun away. Unprovoked. Kyle didn't do anything to provoke. Like, maybe he put out a dumpster fire. He didn't want a gas station to get burned down. Joseph Rosenbaum is the most disgusting. Listen, if you... This kid has criminal charges that I can't even believe he was out of prison on. Like, he has the most disgusting... I saw a breakdown of his criminal charges, like a uh, statement from the his acute the people who have accused him of doing what he did, which he got went to trial and went to prison for. He did, like, 12 years in prison. He should be in prison for the rest of his life. He should never have been out of prison on the streets for what he did. To boys between the ages of 9 and 11, I don't know, there was, like, three or four of them. It was the most vile, disgusting stuff I've ever read. But no, nobody in, on the left, nobody that's saying anything about Kyle saying, yeah, this kid was yelling racial slurs. He was like a monster of a human. This guy, Joseph Rosenbaum, was the epitome of evil. Like, he ruined children's lives. The irony is he's chasing down a, 17, a teenager and ends up, that's how he ends up, his demise was, after ruining his lives, a kid was his demise. Irony? I don't know. Well, why is nobody talking about Joseph Rosenbaum? <laughs> Well, if none of you believe that the universe gives you what you asked for, there's your proof. What? What? Like, what is wrong? Did you hear this guy? He, like, he, they kept bleeping it out, obviously, but he was saying the N-word. Shoot me, I ride on that. Shoot me, blast on me, you bust on me. Like, and, I, and I promise you, like, I saw this guy's arrest record. Don't, you don't want to read it. It's the most vile, disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, just the true meaning of evil. Nobody's saying, oh, this kid was a racist yelling racial slurs and starting trouble. It's, not the, it, it's crazy how this stuff works. Anyway, so he chased Kyle. Kyle had n no other option. The kid was great reaching for his gun. So that happened. Kyle took off running. The mob chased him. The, the kid ran up behind him, hit him. He kept running. Like, you can't just go up and start hitting somebody with a gun and not expect anything to happen. Like, they, were, they weren't. they And listen, if they think that he was just involved in, like, some kind of mass shoot or something, okay, they don't, that's for the police to handle. Like, you don't just get mob, mob mentality, mob justice. Like, the kid's running away. He's obviously, no one else is in danger. Not one other person is in danger. He didn't turn the rifle on anyone else. He stopped the kid that was trying to get the gun. That was it. And then he let, you know, the mob came around. They started screaming, oh, we got to get that. We got to kill that kid. Let's get him. Let's get him. He had no other choice but to run. He was trying to get to the cops. When he started running, nobody else was in danger. Nobody. He wasn't pointing his gun at anyone. He wasn't threatening anybody. That was it. If they just let him run down, the cops would have arrested him. Done deal. Not the case. Never the case with BLM and Antifa. It's always so much destruction and violence with these people. So as he falls on the ground, like, as he falls on the ground, they just uh, swarm on him. This kid jumps up and kicks him in the head. That's aggravated assault. You can't do that. You can't do that. Like, regardless, I mean, half of these people chasing him didn't even know what happened. Everybody was just like, get him, get him, get him. Go watch the videos. They're all out there. This kid jumps up and kicks him. Like, what are you supposed to do? What, what would any logical person do? There's a kid right here in the background. I think that was Anthony Huber in the background with the skateboard. Guess what he does with that skateboard? Boom. Whack with the skateboard. So you guys saw the first kid jump up and kick him. And listen, I didn't even show the picture of... Hang on, we got one more. All right. Digress. All right. So this kid, after Kyle, someone jumps up and kicks him. 
This kid comes after him and clearly whacks him with a skateboard in the head, which can skateboard can quickly become a deadly weapon to the head. So there, there it is right there. He's getting swarmed. Before he fell on the ground while he was running, a kid ran up and hit him in the back of the head with a brick. You can see right here, this is where Kyle's running away. And this kid right here in the white shirt... That's behind him, speeds right up. Kyle's not that fast, you know. He's a kind of little chunky 17-year-old kid carrying a AR-15, a med kit, med kit, and whatever else. He's not running too fast, man. This kid, I would have been high-tailing it. But he, uh, this kid runs right up behind him. Whack! Hits him in the back of the head with a brick. Kyle moves a little further, and that's when he falls. That's when he gets kicked. That's when he gets hit with a skateboard. So he's not firing indiscriminately at these people. The kid that jumped up and kicked him didn't even get shot. It, then the kid that came and hit him with the skateboard, I think it was Anthony Huber or something, hit him with the skateboard, Kyle sh turned around and shot him. <clears throat> Excuse me. He went a few feet away and fell over. The next kid that came up, this kid, Gate Rosenkrauts, I don't know what his name is. So I'm not going to show you the remainder of this picture. So this kid runs up. He sh Kyle has the gun up. <clears throat> So he stops. I mean, watch the video. I'm not going to show the video. I'm not going to show what happens after this. Runs up. Kyle raises the gun. He stops. Takes a few steps back. Kyle lowers the gun. If he just kept walking back, turned around and walked away, he would be fine. Kyle wasn't shooting anyone indiscriminately. Like these people, he wasn't shooting them. He stopped. Took a few steps back. What's he do? Reaches out. Pulls out a gun. Walks up to Kyle, points the gun right at his face to shoot him, and Kyle shot shot him in the arm, vaporized his bicep. Kyle had no other choice at that point to do that. This kid pointed a gun. Kyle saw it like this kid. Look, he didn't shoot him. He wasn't there to shoot him. He, if he if that's what it was done, he would have hit that kid and that kid and this kid and this kid and this kid all over the place. He didn't. This kid got within two feet of him. Kyle raised his gun. Kid stopped and backed away. That's some serious trigger discipline. And, and like I said, the cops weren't there to do anything. Like, this guy's businesses were being burned down. His livelihood was being taken away. He needed someone to help him out. A 17-year-old kid, maybe a bad choice of uh, people to protect his business. But, like I said, so what defund the police looks like. So this kid gets his arm vaporized. Kyle gets, everybody scatters. Kyle gets up and takes off. And... And you can go check out these guys' records on your own. All three felons, convicted felons, violent felons. Joseph Rosenbaum was a violent, evil, evil man. Anthony Huber. Assault and battery, domestic abuse. So he liked to beat up his girlfriend a lot, hit women. Um, false imprisonment. So he kidnapped somebody, held someone against their will. Um, Gage Gro Gage Paul Grosskreutz, felony burglary, illegal weapon. So these weren't stand-up citizens. These were people that liked to get in. They looked to get in trouble. They looked for trouble. They were there. Showed videos the night before of people just running through Kenosha, destroying. It. I guarantee you that these three were. It showed them in that video when uh, Joseph Rosenbaum was yelling the N-word. It showed these guys. They were all right up in the front, wanting to. Listen, these aren't good people. These aren't good guys. They're just not. It's it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want. I don't like violence. I never condone violence. You know, I'm a peaceful guy. This guy, Joseph Rosenbaum, was the devil. These other two guys, they were violent felons. In the aftermath of Kenosha, it was just destroyed. It was like I said, it was a war zone. It was a war zone out there now. That's basically what happened. There's videos out there. You can watch it. You can piece it together. There was no indiscriminate shooting. There was no... The, the biggest problem I have is this kid wasn't a racist. He wasn't a white supremacist. He wasn't a militia member. He went to help protect the business. Um, the three people that he shot were all white. Listen. All right. The mainstream media... And the social media have posted so many lies about this kid and put it into everyone's head that that's exactly what he was. That That's why so many po people believe it. The truth isn't out there. Listen, I'm going to pull up something on my phone right now that I saw yesterday about this story. And it just, it's mind-blowing. Um, all right, so... 
All right, so Kyle Rittenhouse. Okay, so it's about. All right, so what it says, it's a story about Kyle Rittenhouse, but then at, at the end of the story, it says, all right, Ritt, Rittenhouse shot and killed two men after he, cr after he crossed state lines with an AR-15 rifle. That's false. He didn't. He didn't. So that's a lie. This is in a, an article online. So he, there's a first lie. Rittenhouse shot and killed two men after he crossed state lines with an AR-15. False. Claiming he was going to protect the local businesses from rioting protesters during Black Lives Matter protests after the killing of Jacob Blake. False! Like, can you believe this? Jacob Blake's still alive. And in this article, this article right here in front of me, it's saying that the, the police killed Jacob Blake. That's how sad and pathetic our media is these days, guys. It's, uh, it's, right, it's mind-blowing. It says right here in front of me, after the killing of Jacob Blake, Jacob Blake wasn't killed. That This is out of control. This is out of control. No wonder why people believe what they do. No wonder why people believe what they do. So Joe Biden's campaign put out an ad, and I don't know, I couldn't find it, so I don't know if it's been taken down or not. It put out an ad saying something about we will root out white supremacy or something like that, and it showed Kyle Rittenhouse walking as it said that. Um, so it basically, uh, Joe Biden and his team calling Kyle Rittenhouse white supremacist. Now, Lynn Wood Kyle Rittenhouse's lawyer saw that and said, yep, we're suing the Biden campaign. We're suing the Biden administration for calling this kid something he isn't. So, you know how many people see that ad and they see this kid and they're like, oh, white supremacist that shot. Well, first of all, he shot three white people. He never, ever, ever, ever made any racist remarks like Joseph Rosenbaum did. Never. There's no indication whatsoever that this kid was a racist or white supremacist in any way, except for what Joe Biden said, and then you accept you get knuckleheads like this kid Vosh, this socialist commie that calls everyone comrade, and he's a anti-fascist Vosh. Clearly not smart enough to think this through. He calls Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist after he chooses three white kids. I'm not sure how he came up with that conclusion. That seems like the only possible outcome of this, but yeah. It's just really weird. It's just really fucking weird, dude. I don't know. It's not surprising to me that Kyle Rittenhouse would turn out the way that he did with support from parents like that. Or parent, of course. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what Kyle Rittenhouse's family situation is, so I don't really know. Um, but I think at the end of the day, if there's one thing I want to reiterate, more importantly than anything else, it's to remember that our enemies are sad and lonely, okay? Uh, and desperate. And that doesn't make them any less dangerous, but it does mean that, like, at the heart of every neo-Nazi and white supremacist is somebody who took not getting laid in high school the worst possible way. Or <laughs> oh, the irony of it all. Oh, that slug sitting in his basement crapping on other people. But see, to him, Kyle is a neo-Nazi white supremacist when... I <laughs> I'm I'm speechless. Like he, hey Vosh, you, ugh, Vosh, you genius. He killed, he shot. No, excuse me. He shot three white people. He never said any racial slurs. He never claimed to be part of any uh, militia or white supremacist group. Where is that? Just in your brilliant mind, where you think uh, socialism is going to be a great thing here, and you call everybody comrade. You sound like you're a uh, top. Listen, I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna keep going on this. So anyway, that's what they, everybody thinks of Kyle Rittenhouse because of people like Bosch, because of people, things like Joe Biden's ad, because of things like the mainstream media and social media. So let's. T okay, I'm gonna end. This. this is a long video. So anyway, I made another video about Ricky Schroeder that I put. I'll put it at the end. I'll put it at the end of this video. Ricky Schroeder is a famous actor. He was super popular, super famous, and when he was a kid, at Silver Spoons. Now he put up one hundred fifty thousand dollars bail to raise part of the two million to get Kyle out, and he got a lot of ton of backlash, as you can imagine. But he didn't care. He said, "This kid's innocent. I'm doing what any father would do." He's, he was accused of um, domestic assault, but it got dropped, and he said he was innocent. But he got you know, vilified for it. And he said, this kid's innocent. I don't care about the backlash. This kid's innocent. I'm going to help him out. Um, 
And there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that donated this kid. There's a lot of people that say he's absolutely innocent. The proof is all right in front of you. Uh, you know, he shouldn't. He's There's no sort of racism, white supremacy, militia, nothing. It was, you know, a 17-year-old kid got himself into a bad situation that, you know, probably handled it better than any grown man could. But why the police weren't doing their job, why the National Guard wasn't there, why they just let these BLM and Antifa destroy this town is beyond me. And you've got someone like Ricky Schroeder, who's a very smart, intelligent guy. I don't think if he, if this kid even had an ounce of guilt, that Ricky would have just been like, yeah, here's 150 grand of my money, who cares? It just didn't make sense. So, I'm going to leave it here. Um, there's a lot more I could say about this, but I tried to lay it out kind of step by step with common sense, some, you know, facts, first of all, facts and the truth of what happened. And if you think about it with common sense and use logic, instead of thinking with like this Bosch mindset that this kid's a neo-Nazi white supremacist and whatever, I don't know why that kid thinks he can talk about anybody. I mean, but you know, here and there. So, listen, that it is what it is. If you still think this kid did something wrong, I mean, I that that's up. To, that's fine. That's your opinion. The great thing is we live in a country where we can have different opinions and still live peacefully among each other. Um, you know, I'm not looking to jam anyone up as a different opinion of mine. I invite it. That's fine. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you, you know, if you think Kyle's innocent, if you think he was stupid for getting involved in it, if you think he's guilty, let me know in the comments. Like I said earlier, hit the subscribe button. Join me on this journey. We got a, a lot to talk about. I just wanted to let you guys know that for the people in that are leaving the comments that Kyle should be in jail, Kyle's guilty, Kyle's a racist, Kyle's a white supremacist, none of that fits together. That's just a narrative. It's a false narrative. None of it, it's not cohesive with what happened. And if you really look into it, it doesn't, you know, he showed up there with a med kit saying he was going to run in to help protesters if need be. And, so, and it shows him on one of the videos, someone got hurt, he's like, you need a medic, I'm right here. And he ran off to help somebody. It was a black person. The neo-Nazi white supremacists wouldn't have done that. So, I don't know. That's my take on it, guys. And I'm sticking to it. Listen, I don't condone violence of any kind. But you people that want to defund the police, this is what your world is going to look like. So think that through a little better. Think it through. I know there's a narrative that's supposed to be playing out on the left. But think it through. And listen, I've said it a million times. I'm not a conservative Republican. I'm not a liberal Democrat. I'm just someone in the middle who uses common sense and logic. All right, guys. I'm tired. This has been a long video. I'm going to bed. Till next time. Peace.